All right, all right. We are here after a blockbuster win for United uh, versus Liverpool, arch rivals. And without even introductions, you can see face reactions and tell who's who. Um, clearly, that there's an Aston Villa bystander somewhere doing something. Like we'll talk about that later. But thoroughly deserved victory. If club comes to the fucking post-match press conference and says anything. I'm going to fly down to like Liverpool myself and like hit him on the head if he says that like we were too negative or anything because <laughs> negative was negative was something that we were not in, in today's game and I would stand by it and uh, let's open it up Abhinav clearly you have something to say bro do I have <laughs> that's the whole thing I have nothing to say like I mean if again if it was a negative if it was a, if it was a low block if it was something where United kind of nicked a goal just one chance or a couple of chances and then we kind of missed a lot of these things then fine I, I could at least kind of be upbeat about the performance but that is not the case it's unfortunate I mean I'm, I don't know United deserve to win uh, the number of chances they've created the way they've played especially in the second half I mean it was the, that goal Second half was Liverpool controlled it well, but you know you kind of rode that luck a bit, and then you got that second goal, and from then on, extra time, everything it was all United, and even I think we were a bit naive in the in the extra time, uh, which was very so unlike how we were in, in the Carabao Cup, um, and I, I don't know, man, I think there are a lot of missed chances and a lot of balls, you know, we didn't control the midfield at all in second in the in the extra time, so it, I don't know, United deserved it, and then that last goal was just kind of. A final nail in the coffin. I mean, yes, I, 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 I mean, it's fine. We can lose to United, but at Old Trafford, but not this way. Not in one twenty-first minute. No, that doesn't happen. That shouldn't happen. Sucks. Yeah. <clears throat> no, we we will take win in any way. Is Somebody's it? clearly not clearly not wired to take their loss as well. <laughs> they ruin any loss. Any loss is fine, but against United, I no. Man. I think the biggest loss is the end of the fairy tale story. Finally, that will come, <laughs> and finally, I can you know go back to supporting my second team again. <laughs> the I'm truth glad I'm talking that United to. were the ones to end Klopp's fairy tale. I mean, who started the fairy tale? Okay, first of all, who started the fairy tale? Okay, now if I kind of give give talk about this, it'll be like, okay, his kid's too hurt, he's kind of talking, whatever. But there was there was no fairy tale to begin with. Klopp's just leaving, and then. There is we, the team was in a good position. It was a construct created by all the opposition teams just to build up and then just kind of keep knocking them down. <laughs> no one said about talked about a fairy tale. It was just happening, and then okay, fine. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, fake, it's fine. Some I just want to break. One thing. I just want to break one thing for you guys, especially the United boys. It's Coventry boys. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go. Right. It is Chelsea. Nah. <laughs> So it's going to be Chelsea versus United in the final. Yeah. Oh my fucking god, dude. Like, we were so close to that final match at Wembley, man. Shit. What a shit show. Oh, I, don't know, I don't know who's at home, but I think it is. You oh, know, it's at Wembley, bro. Dude, it's Wembley. It's at Wembley. Oh, it's at Wembley. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's Wembley. Yeah. 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 Wembley. Yeah. Here yeah. we come. Let's go. <laughs> I, think, I think you're nailed on for the final, dude. Like, if you don't make it now, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Bro. We we That's beat Liverpool right. today. It doesn't really matter if we, we lose have won the FA Cup. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we, we denied we denied Liverpool their fairy tale story, the the fairy tale that was created by us. We were the we were the ones to break it. So I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> who were the so who were the standout uh, players for? I mean, especially looking at the game, there were like you know multiple scorers. There were some uh, saves that should have um, goals that should have been saved, but also some clutch goals at the end of the game. So, who were your standout uh, performers throughout the game? For me, from a United standpoint, I think it was Garnacho through and through. He was so lively in the game. Kobe Manu was excellent for the 80 minutes that he was on the field. I feel like he was he was the one trying to move the ball really quick in the midfield. Um, but otherwise, I think Varan had a solid-ish performance. Dalo had a solid-ish performance. I'm, I only have complaints on Onana because I feel like all three goals could have been saved. In he was culpable in some in some way, shape, or form. Although there were deflections, I could argue that 
you know those deflections didn't matter that much um and then liverpool and for liverpool i thought soboslai was really good he was playing very well like he was actually like a big threat um it's unfortunate that like he, he couldn't couldn't get on the score sheet or anything but outside of that um, the mcallister was good mcallister controlled the game yeah. i think second half we were back to our premier league self i guess like we were playing well controlled the game and everything that goal i don't know how you can just kind of give so much space to antony to turn and get a shot on his wrong right wrong foot and it's i don't know just i think it's more on antony because nobody expects him to do it <laughs> exactly exactly but i think the memes what is that goal doesn't let people turn endo doesn't let people turn endo and then who was the other guy i think they they, they don't they, they are much more clinical and they are more uh, like okay they just like thought okay yeah sure, we'll see shoot and then then he actually <laughs> shot piece of Yeah. I mean, he comes up with once in a like one goal yeah. per season that is monumental. Like his uh, debut goal against Arsenal, I remember, still haunts me. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Goal. Yeah, this one. <laughs> like wouldn't do anything, but will turn up in like that one moment, which will be like you know, uh, super monumental for the season. But uh, Wamsi, how how was it watching United win, play? uh some good football i think you were never on the back foot at least not in the first half maybe a few minutes a few uh, like a quarter of the game in the second half beginning of it but then uh, i think you held you held them uh really well you played well what do you think about yeah uh, how it eric tenag yeah, dude i know our fucking uh, podcast host nirav is not here but in his fucking face and how earned his fucking money today I've never seen so many attackers on the pitch, and everybody knew what to do. I don't know if it's down to Ten Hag or maybe it was Bruno's leadership. Uh, Bruno's playing fucking centre back <laughs> at that yeah. point. He's just telling Orlando, "Give me the ball," and he's, he's playing that quarterback role. I think he executed really well. Uh, Ten Hag might have given instructions, but you know, all kudos to Bruno for communicating, executing. Really good game, dude. Control the game the first half. Uh, solid performance. usual culprits playing the ball down to the left flank without luke shaw uh ball getting turned over uh two goals coming from the same half space in matter of 5 minutes um uh sad to see after how we started the game but you know as we progressed into the second half uh they we were really dull they couldn't put two passes together but i think the crowd also deserves a little bit kudos today they uh the last 10 minutes um uh, they were they were behind the players and you know there was a lot of pressure and yeah like anthony anthony's dude i've i've noticed anthony is really good at this weird shit okay like the ball randomly falls in the box no one expects it and somehow he can only score those goals but when he has <laughs> time and he has like skill and all that he can't score but randomly like i saw the barca goal he scored same shit like this ball randomly fell there and he scored today also ball randomly fell in his feet scored and what can i say about amad man it's two premier two indicated two yeah. goals for manchester united both both winners one against milan one against liverpool and dude that was the only place where amad could have put the ball and keller wouldn't have saved with that angle yeah. and what a fucking finish we we were we, while we were watching it live i think uh, animesh did mention like about the maturity in his touch and like how he moved away for a second and then to like take this shot opened his body up I think that was pretty good and for me personally I was really impressed with it's it's, it's really easy to be bogged down after 105 minutes like you know when you're trailing again and then like when you have 15 minutes like we've seen this script too many times and I think that was impressive for me to like come back in 15 minutes um although like Abhinav mentioned like it was all credit to Darwin Nunez and his stupidity like there was no Ooh, Exactly. But he came back twice in that same game, and we went on to win it. That's that's pretty commendable. Yeah, and no McTominay goal, man, in a comeback game at home for the so first time this season. The what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought one of those. Yeah. yeah. I think now we're teetering into delusional lands. <laughs> But you know, like I, I noticed something different this time that Ten Hag did not tell his players to press high up the pitch. and i think that's something that he's tried to change up at least because like wamsi mentioned like we had so many attacking players players who knew what has to be done when they're on the ball or off the ball and i think somewhere down the line ten hag knows that his job is under question and he's finally trying to like do something 
different and not make the same mistakes over and over again and i think this result is probably a hint because of that as well i'm like kudos to all the players who played and especially kobe mine he is my favorite right now like the way he's just moving past defenders he like it's just like watching a hot knife through butter like just <clears throat> easing past defenders he did that like two or three times this game we should have scored that uh, that one dribble that he made and like yeah. the ball went to mctominay i think if that goal had gone yeah. in the game would have been very different but as long as we won i don't care i, I mean think, I, to be honest but, uh, i i i'm glad that he didn't score mctominay <laughs> because I mean you wouldn't have experienced this game right otherwise like winning a 2-0 or two like going up to two, two goals up and then defending and then winning versus this this kind of gives you belief right this kind of brings back the unity in the team it does a lot to the morale yeah uh, I, i do disagree with the ten hag assessment bro like they were they were like ample spaces in the middle of the park they were like your two units were so far apart especially uh, you could every... picnic in there in between yeah, yeah. you could do, you could have like an indian big fat indian wedding in there like <laughs> there was that much <laughs> space in there so I, i but yeah the overall overall game management uh, game uh, structure was improved than before for sure but uh, diallo bro like uh, say say a few words about diallo because uh this guy deleted his instagram I, i know i mean there was it was for different reasons but there was this huge uh social media controversy about it and then he was never played never given a chance coming back from injury and then scored the clutch goal probably the most important goal of the season up until now you know me and sid were just talking literally in our chat we were just talking right before amat came on we were just talking about him and he comes on and yeah he looks so good to it uh, he looked really really good like in a, in a game like Like that, right? You have 15 minutes, and maybe you're like, you know, 30, 40 minutes today. But he hasn't. This guy hasn't played a game in so long, dude. And like to come clutch like that, it's really, really hard. It's not easy at all. I mean, I don't know if he's really the age he says he is after what I saw on Twitter. There are a lot of people <laughs> that are like faking ages and shit. But <laughs> you know, could be I possible. But <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We, we only talk about like Ahmad. Goal, but like in the third goal, also he was dragging the defender wide with yeah. his run. Like yeah. that opened up space for uh, you know Rashford to run through that channel. It all happened because of a stupid error by a Liverpool player. But like nonetheless, like to come onto the pitch with fresh legs and like have that perspective that like we are going to win this game, right? Like if we are two three down, we have fifteen minutes, we are going to give it all. and play with cohesion with other players on the pitch i think speaks a lot and I, i i really hope that he gets more chances dude like it's a it's a weird predicament because if you think about it like united for all our inconsistencies in how we play we the position that amad wants to play those two positions are locked in right rashford and garnacho i think they have cemented that position and anthony with Do, doesn't help himself sometimes when he comes on like and doesn't play well that is when we keep longing for amad and to come and for amad to come and play in and this was the only game that i can think of where amad and anthony were both on the pitch at the same time so maybe there is something there we need to explore a little bit but uh, man uh, i before we dive into this united euphoria i actually want to quickly talk about liverpool right because what impressed me the most about liverpool was how they played against city because i really thought that they were unlucky to not walk away from that anfield game with with a win it was a different liverpool side today abinov whether you agree or not and what's happening like did you guys underestimate like it was there some sort of like you know wakey wakey time that happened <laughs> before But this is this is why i never underestimate derby matches men united away or everton away even though the other team is like is, is in the most shittiest of forms it's it's just kind of you know it's just on the day and then the underdog always has something to kind of you know show up and then play with their lives and i don't know i think this was an off game today i mean i i haven't watched the first half i'm i'm the, the first regulation that i only watched the after 90 minutes or so and then it's it's just something which which is so unlike liverpool like sloppy passing giving away the balls the two goals that we conceded I mean, I don't, I don't. We never give balls so high up on the pitch, and then that was such an unnecessary pass. And you know, I don't know, man. I think uh, this takes some time. I mean, again, 
the team has been good all season. I can't really pick this one game and then kind of bash them and say, okay, you know, you haven't done this or you've let us down or something. I can't be that critical. Uh, these things happen. Just, you know, you're just out of luck or you just kind of don't take your chances. Uh, United, Everton, doesn't matter. You kind of just get found out. And then again, and the thing in the worst part of the, or the best part for United is that it's not an undeserved win. It's, it's just something that we didn't show up and we were kind of tired. I mean, again, imagine, right? I mean, if you kind of put things into context from the like last one month or so. We've been running on fumes, literally, like the City game, you know, the depleted squad, the Chelsea game, all of these things. We showed up everywhere, even um, all of these FA Cup matches and all that. So at some point, you kind of have this off games at some point, and it, it just had to be this game. And I'm actually glad this is this game. I mean, not the Premier League. It, it isn't happening in the Europa. So as much as I can, as I'm kind of craving about it, I think I can take it eventually. Yeah. Hopefully, we come back. Do you think this will have a... Dude, I, mean, I have a follow-up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, like, I mean, good point about, like, the intense season, right? Like, today I saw United, like, using their bench strength a lot. And, you know, mm -hmm. it took that to, like, win. How important do you think, like, going forward, like, in this season, right, is that bench strength and getting your players back for it, like, Jota, big uh, miss today. Exactly. I was about to say that, right? So, if Jota had come in instead of Gakpo, this would have been 3-1 Liverpool, normal time, game over. That's it, done. It was Gagpo who slowed us down. Gagpo is like, what, fourth or fifth choice forward? He was good for his last season, but this season completely done. Uh, again, it just shows you, right? I mean, because we, we still have like academy players who haven't like debuted in Premier League on the bench right now. So Jota is a miss. Trent is a miss. Allison is a miss. Uh, Allison would have said at least one of those four goals. Alison would have saved those one of those four yeah. goals. Uh, and then we Ponate had a rookie def Ponate was a miss. So again, I can't be too critical at this point. Yes, we could have, we should have won it given the stage at where we were, given the intensity and and, and all of that uh, pressure and everything. We should have won it in, in normal time, but just kind of take take a breath and then look at everything that we have done since January, since ever since Salah went off to Afcon, right? From since from then on. Salah hasn't like started a game for us till till today. He's this is today is the first game he started, or maybe last Europa League, right? Since January. So put everything into context. I'm fine. I'm like okay, but that nine one twenty first minute man, how the fuck do you lose then? Shit. So okay, that's so I, have, I have a different outlook to it. I feel like missing these players, right? It, mm -hmm. it kind of helps. In uh, I mean the way Liverpool have coped, no, no, uh, all flowers to you guys, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think anybody, Arteta, Guardiola, all the elite managers included, I don't think they would have coped the way Liverpool have. So big, 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 uh, you know, appreciation for the fact that how you did. But if you have so many players missing, team kind of evolves and learns to play certain different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like what was carrying Liverpool up until now in the last few fixtures was the fact that it was a fairy tale. It was, you're going for the quadruple, you're going all out, you're top uh, in Europa, you're Premier League, mm -hmm. FA Cup, you're doing great, everything is working out for you. Uh, so I think this will be a big test of how you come out of it because gelling back uh, Trent Arnold, uh, like Alexander Arnold in with the current gameplay, Salah again, world-class players, they can change the game on their own. So not questioning their abilities, but que kind of having some questions or, or question marks around players around them, how they will play. Because right now, Darwin Nunez uh, is, in his head, he's the main guy. But when Salah comes back, he's not. Would he be able to, like, you know, adjust his play back to where Salah, like, how he was playing how, when Salah was there? Same as with, like, other people in uh, Matip and, like, oh, Konate and all of those. So, I think those are the bigger dynamics that I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to next matches onwards. Obviously, no yeah. doubt. No, I, I, I totally get that. I, mean, I think I think even the first half, I think I again was just watching my my, my Liverpool group was telling me that I think we were we tried to invert Joe jo Gomez was get playing right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We tried to invert him. The point about inverting right back, at least in Klopp's new style of play, is that you have a pacey centre back who can who has the recovery pace, who can go for it, who can just keep tracking all of those runs and all of that, right? So Joe Gomez was was doing that, and then we had Kwanza. Like you, you can't do that with a makeshift right back and a rookie centre back, right? I mean, because you still try to play it, play out that way. But I think if that is the way we want to kind of uh, go with the season, I think once Trent is back, once Konate is back, I think we should have a better dynamic to the team, but more structure to the team. Um, but again, we have 
at that point we'll have we'll be spoiled with choices i think conor bradley everyone i think there'll be some backups coming in so i don't know it's very intriguing man i mean i i don't have an answer to your question yes i mean it can disrupt the rhythm at this point uh, but it's very intriguing um yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes i mean for even though you guys are missing the players i think when they come back in there is no two questions in my mind that they'll come straight into the squad oh, yeah 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 because these are even though liverpool has outperformed expectations with these players i'm sure like club would swap them out in a heartbeat once mm-hmm. they are all back and uh, i i i see the bigger picture that like something had to give like in this run of fixtures right like and from a liverpool perspective this may be the best fixture to give like, exactly that that's that yeah that's what i'm saying i think yeah it sucks that it's united it sucks that it i mean exactly i mean looking at the positive side of things right? i mean it's a quarter final it's not like semi final final or anything it's a quarter final it's something it will probably ease our mind we will we'll be more focused on the premier league and europa league obviously and we'll have less fixture pile up or whatever you want to call it and then i don't know man i think this is the this is the best case scenario for losing to be honest um except for the 121st minute but it's okay it's fine with, with that i want to might just tap all the momentum energy belief out of the out of the whole system of being mm-hmm. on the positive side being an arsenal fan i can just open <laughs> paper right now. with that i actually want to switch gears and talk about something else like um i w- i want to talk about top 5 and i know there is it was a great night for united fans and okay. everything but i want to get I like i may have to leave i'm so sorry i'll i'll, I'll go but yeah see you see you guys see ya yep bye many more losses bro hopefully <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm going to restart that segment at 2535 um okay with that i want to actually jump into like the top 5 and what the table means like and what the outcome would probably be because as of today aston villa has played 29 games are at 56 points um tottenham has played 28 games and at 53 points and united are 6 points behind like the nearest like you know top 5 rival i want aj's honest thoughts aj in the aston villa jersey to talk to me about like united's chances for the top 5 finish uh before this weekend i would have said uh possibly probably not going to happen it's a pipe dream but uh, i mean winning against liverpool especially uh, the way they won more than anything else it wasn't a scrappy win you oh. went down twice i came back both times uh french players doing well substitutions being made and 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 working and plus more than anything else spurs losing the way they lost mm-hmm. uh and Aston Villa kind of in a slump. They have been in a slump for a while now. I thought that it'll be a blip, but I think it's a cause of concern, especially uh two goals if you see West Ham that were chalked off. Both of them were from corners, so there are some deficiencies in their system as well. And Aston Villa has the toughest run of games. They play all the big teams. Uh, they can be consequential for the title race, but they can also just crumble and not, you know, be at their best or perform against any of those teams and just fall out. So I do fear for Aston Villa. I do believe they. Uh, an additional additional thing is the Conference League, right? They also have Conference League to contend with, while Spurs and uh, United they don't. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm a little bit fearful about Aston Villa uh, in, at this moment. I think English Premier League will get five spots, and I think Spurs and United might edge them just because of you know them not being able to recover from their slump. Yeah, said. What do you think? I think United has a good chance because like AJ mentioned right Aston Villa have a lot of fixtures like against the top 4 coming up and the same goes for Tottenham right like Tottenham's last 3 games are City Arsenal and Liverpool so yes they decide the top half of like who wins the PL but they also will eventually decide who finishes 5th or 4th right and I think given United's current state like given how they are coming up from this match if they are able to build up that momentum and after the IB if if martinez comes back that will be a huge boost for the defense as well so there is some hope i wouldn't be overly optimistic about being very confident that we'll finish top 5 but i think top 5 is still doable and it has been like this for a while and even looking at the ucl right now england is doing pretty well to get the second spot for the f- uh, five teams uh, going through the, the champions league so 
I would be optimistic as a United fan, but I would not put all my hopes on that one basket. Vams, I'm looking at the fixtures, bro, and I'm I see Brentford yeah. away. I'm looking at Brentford I'm looking away. At... I'm looking at like Chelsea at home, and I feel like if we've seen this crime documentary too many times, we know how the <laughs> next one's gonna go. So, what what do we what, what should we do? What should we do for Brentford? What you know, for Chelsea. Dude, honestly, honestly, you know what I'm thinking. See, it's possible for United, but I think it might come down to goal difference, man. And that's what I'm like really oh, fucking yeah. scared about. They can make <laughs> up the points. It's possible. Then you know, the fixtures are hard. See, Villa have played a game extra this week, right? So they're on 29 games and 56. So we're like nine points behind. Uh, Tottenham have played 28 and around 53. And we've uh, 28 and 53, and we're on 28 and 47. We can close the gap to Tottenham. If Villa do crumble, I think it it comes down to goal difference. Sadly, I don't know. I, I, there's a you you know that feeling, right, Nihal? Yeah. Like when you know you've done enough, but you know it's not enough. Not enough, yeah. And I, yeah, and dude, yeah. it's just and dismal it's, that we've scored 39 goals and conceded 39. Dude, how have Luton fucking scored more goals than us, man? Like, so uh, you know, the Luton is a great team. That, just Let's not throw any shade. No, it really is. Yeah. I mean, no shade. It sucks that they might get relegated. It's true. Yeah. Then the zone, right? <laughs> it sucks. They played really good football. <laughs> but as, as great as know, they are, they will get relegated. <laughs> right? And I, I don't know, man. It's crazy. I don't know how if, if I have to give kudos to Ten Hag for this. Like, we've scored less goals than Luton. <laughs> Somehow, we've kept the second highest clean sheets in the fucking league. I don't understand With this. How is this happening? happening? Yeah, I mean, yeah, and I, I keep thinking about this a lot too. That like, for having such a shitty season, how are we in such a great position to like still like turn this around? And I don't have answers. I feel like I need to do a lot of research on like how did we end up in this predicament? I think it's probably because like Aston Villa and Tottenham stepping off the gas a bit is making us look better uh, coming up there. But in all probability, I look at the table. We have ten games. If you win 8 out of 10, that means that Spurs and Villa each have to only win 6 out of 10. And that looks like a real possibility. Um, The toughest of the lot for the games that we have coming up are probably Arsenal and Liverpool. The great news is that both of them are at home. Right? So, we are at least better. Newcastle also, man. It's not going to be easy. I know it. It's at home. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, But Brentford away is going to be the biggest one, dude. If Just there was if some hope as an Arsenal fan, we I personally do consider our fixture at, at Old Trafford if it comes down to it for us to be the toughest out of all the fixtures that we have, tougher than Etihad. I mean, in my in my head. I mean, I think uh, I also feel like uh, United as a team is set up very well to counter Arsenal and Liverpool. Like and these the really big teams, I think. At home, especially like at Old Trafford, I think I feel like we have a good chance on taking them on, frustrating them, nothing else. But even if we like don't have the majority of the ball, don't have the greatest of chances, we just need that one counter attack to latch on because we've seen we know how lethal like Garnacho and Rashford yeah. are on the counter. So I have that hope. But forgetting those two fixtures, everything else also look looks equally hard, and we don't have any margin for error. Like. Yeah. If there was ever a time to step up, it is now. And I feel yeah. like today's fixture, we have to feed off of that energy, bro. Like we should. And, and you know, like like the next set of games, like we face Brentford, we, we face Chelsea, and we face Liverpool all in like seven days. So we have three big games in seven days, and we can't slip in any of those. And given how thin our bench is right now, all our players will be stretched beyond what they're capable of. And I think if at all we crumble, it'll be because of our bench again, which has been the theme for us throughout the season yeah. also I mean, I'm worried about the Chelsea Liverpool because it's in two days one is on April 5th and the next is on April 7th that's it's not good like back to back games literally two heavyweights that too and for what it's worth Chelsea are showing up I mean I, I hope I jinx them to the core but they <laughs> are they are showing up like even though they played like a weird weird Liverpool team, they did go toe to toe even with that weird Liverpool team that they played. Um, this today's morning, I completely written them off because Leicester is a really good team. 
although they are in championship they are like steamrolling opponents and they were 2-0 up to come back you know uh, from that position to like just come back and and win it they are there and stamford bridge is never an easy place to go and like when like mm-hmm. city haven't won i feel like a lot of good teams went there and like got found out that like it's not a on a given day it's not easy to beat chelsea so we'll see um but what would you yeah not just a team right like i i think this is the time for ten hag too man to show that you know he can he can finish a season well like you know this like the whole first half has been shit middle has been like you know we crashed out of europe like they yeah. have too much toxicity everywhere you know neal you were saying we have to feed off that positivity right and we need to like there's like there's a chance for silverware mm-hmm. this is ten hag's time to show his metal that he can he can be a top manager and i think it does come down to him i, I like what i'm saying like today's game was yeah. he managed it pretty well haven't said that in a while so and the balls on him to, to like drop casemiro bro like that has to say yeah. something to trust he's injured he's, he's injured, injured bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's injured. Yeah, he's injured. Trust Spanish me. the training. I don't think he has that. Spanish training is so intense. He's injured. I just yeah. don't think he has <laughs> that big, big, big of a balls. But I also question, uh, like over, overall United thing, right? Like it's a one-off fixture. I think Vamsi, if you remember, we, I, I was going for a United win uh, before this fixture yeah, because, yeah, yeah. because of the fact that it was a one-off fixture and it has something at the end of the tunnel. Uh, like you know, it feels like you would, you might find the jackpot at the end of the rainbow with this one. uh but yeah. with the premier league it's it can if if there's a one negative result soon after this win it might just go down the route where in like you know the season is a write off so you really have to be on it from the yeah. word go but i do want to talk about like your opponents in the title race which is spurs yeah. and their manager saying top 4 is not it for us it's not the ambition it's not what we're looking for uh he said that tottenham has achieved much more i don't know what he's talking about i don't remember what they were talking about <laughs> But they still have a team. Keep the kangaroo shit, bro. So what do you think <laughs> about this? We're like a big club, yeah. Like his, his is he basing his research on San Antonio Spurs? Maybe. <laughs> 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 what is he doing? Dude, did anyone see that Verna miss? By the way, or did, yeah. did anyone see that shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, what was that, bro? <laughs> It was harder to miss from there. <laughs> like, bro, yeah. he went into the goal after missing it, and the ball went out. And what? I think, yeah, what I, I, think I hope it happens more. I, I also think that a lot of teams underestimate Fulham, go there and get fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Including us, yeah. us included. Yeah, also got fucked. Marco Silva is a really good coach, and like some yeah. days, like all of them turn up, and then it's like really hard to beat them. Yeah. It's just not easy. fucking. Villian is playing like prime Neymar one day in like Craven yeah. Cottage. Mm. <laughs> they have a really good squad, and they have like everything that's going for them. And um, you know, if you're not careful, you'll get found out. Like if you go to Fulham, like with that kind of confidence. Yeah. So that's that's what it is. And looking yeah. at their fixtures, also like I feel like. David Moyes is stepping up at the right time. Having lost that first fixture in the Europa, came back and fucking triumphantly beat the opponents like five yeah. zero, yeah. which is nuts. And they are they are facing um, uh, Spurs too. So I'm I'm hoping. And today they they actually dented Villa. Like after that hectic midweek Europa League fixture, they came back and like actually punched something back. So if we have If we have any hope of like finishing top five, I think we need some help from our former manager, and hopefully David Moyes delivers again with some points of next week. But I mean, if you don't step up, he has a pretty good chance of getting this. <laughs> <laughs> getting it himself. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going in. <laughs> so, um, Dude, so I'm, I'm looking at uh, Tot. Mm-hmm. fixtures real quick they're playing luton next west ham nottingham forest then they play newcastle city and arsenal and liverpool back to back yeah newcastle city arsenal and liverpool back to back that's going to be fucking hard do it i think the fixture yeah, with I city is going to be they don't even win one i think the fixture with city is going to be pushed be. back because a uh, city qualified is that the fa cup yeah 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 i think Ooh. they're going to win that one Oh, I see. Still, that's the run, bro. That we have to target. Like, if there is a run, right, a patch that we need, that is the patch, like yeah. that we need. We need to hit the purple patch. I'm. I mean, like I said, we are really lucky to be in a position that where we are, and 
players need to realize that everyone around the club needs to realize that and like actually step through the situation because we would potentially like have a chance of like playing in champions league again dude like and with a trophy at the end of the season like imagine if we have really good last 12 games we are in like we would have potentially have a better season than arsenal if arsenal fuck <laughs> <up. laughs> let's switch gears to just looking forward to the next season right like I've been Honestly, I've been in a position where um, towards the season, it was so sad that like I was always looking forward to the next season. I'm like, yes, something will happen next season. Ineos came in. Like, you know, we, we've made the headlines with Omar Barada. We are in the headlines for all the wrong reasons for with Dan Ashworth and so on and so forth. Um, I want to ask you both, like Wamsi and said, do you see Ten Hag being as our coach next season? Like... And if you see so, what should the outcome be for the rest of the season for him to be there? Go I want to go first, right? And uh, I th- okay, here's the weird part. I think he's gonna be in charge because most of our management setups above him they haven't started, and I think they need stability in like the coaching coaching department and like you know player structure a little bit and not change too much i think once that structure above i think it's going to take all of next season once all that settles ten hawks contract is due to expire apparently all the coaches contracts are due to expire yeah. and a lot of player contracts are also all due to expire right mm-hmm. and if there's a time i think they might focus on infrastructure this year uh if if we make top four yes but if you know if if it goes downhill from here he's definitely not keeping his job but you know if if i you know you know how ten hag is right when when his, when his job is on the line we hit start hitting a patch and you know random random goals start falling from everywhere so i don't know i i think i think it could be a I think he could stay in charge next season just because just because of how I'm seeing our Ashworth hasn't started. We haven't found a sporting director yet. You know, we haven't found head of our recruitment yet. We haven't, dude, we don't have a head of physio. We apparently, we apparently let that guy go after he said we were going to have two left backs and you know, we <laughs> fucked up the good one. That is sackable offense, by the way. Like, I would sack people too. <laughs> 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 Your fullbacks are coming back. Like, let's terminate Regulion's loan and be like, oh, oops, my bad. <laughs> I read the wrong scan. I'm like, what you do? Yeah. I didn't want to come into it, but did you hire Gary O'Driscoll, like our medical doctor? And did he say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they pushed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no not go. him, not him, not him. Oh, not him. No, oh. they, they, no, 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 they fucked up the. No, not him, not him. Okay. So, okay. They got him to like build a recruit department, and they left that uh, head head or head guy go man, after he said this shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Immediately <laughs> after they let him go. But yeah. like, so maybe maybe against Brentford when we play against Brentford next time because he's on a red card. So Ooh. I'm just glad about that one bit. But <laughs> <laughs> watch him post on Instagram supporting us. <laughs> he does that. He's, shit. <laughs> he's such a fucking confused soul. Like, sorry for digressing, but like. That dude yeah. has literally gone all over England now. <laughs> like he's he's been with us. Yeah. Suddenly got recalled by Spurs and then sent to Brentford. And like I'm sure next season, until his his contract expires, he'll just keep going on loan because I don't think Ash trusts yeah. him at all. Bro, before that, he's playing under Simeone randomly before <laughs> before he came to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that shit also happened. <laughs> oh, Wamsi, you are yeah. saying just going back to all of it, you are saying that like. Regardless of the finish, you see Ten Hag being there with a good probability. Yeah, yeah. Just because you know he adds some stability, and you know there's a his contract's gonna be up. We're gonna save some money, and maybe which I think they're gonna give him that season that he needs with the proper support structure that he's been craving so far. And we'll come to the structure later. So far, if we do well, yeah, we'll come yeah. to the structure in a bit. But Sid, do you agree? Do you have similar thoughts on this? Not end? fully agreeing. Um, so I think. It'll depend a lot on how the season ends. And if we end up in top five and if that's enough for the Champions League, then 
Ten Hag just might edge through and keep his job. But I will. I sort of agree with Ramsey on how he's uh, like how Ineos have been acting. But that's where that, that's also where I disagree, because Ineos have been very decisive in how they are making their decisions, and. I feel like with Jim Ratcliffe, he like how he's talking about the stadium and how he's bringing in. Uh, he brought in Brailsford, then he brought in Berara, then probably we're gonna get Dan Ashworth, right? The speed at which they are making decisions, I don't think they want to let one more season go in just another rebuild, another rebuild, and so on. So, I think at the end of the season, they will want to have a manager that they completely trust irrespective of what happens if it if it means ten hag is out then i think they'll already keep looking and and, and the thing is we already discussed this before but right now a lot of big clubs are on the market for a good manager like if you look at liverpool maybe bayern will also look at a new manager barca will also look at a new manager and this is when like the big manager like turnaround will happen right and if we again wait for one more season and we miss the bus on these good managers who might be willing to move right now then the rebuild will be slowed again and i'm pretty sure like the new leadership knows this and so it will depend on how much they trust ten hag by the end of the season and if they see him actually learning from his mistakes and building up better not just getting better results but like how we are getting those results and how we are playing them how we are playing controlling games going forward like today was a good step up in terms of how we played not just the result right so if that continues and if we get a good finish by the end of the season then i think ten hag might just stay otherwise i have a feeling that he might be moved on and we'll get another manager to like sort of plug in with the rebuild that's going to happen over the next few seasons yeah i mean i for me if it's if no champions league football probably like ineos is probably going to cut it um and try to go for a new manager but more than anything i'm i mean in yours or not or like under even edward wood we've always went for a really good manager like it's only david moyes was sus bro in all of this and yeah. ole because ole came in as an interim manager but every big man nah, ragnik was also sus bro i mean those ragnick are all interim also managers, full right? sus. there's are interim managers that yeah. came into like as patchwork but like if you think about like the big changes there were three big changes in my opinion like one was louis van hal jose mourinho and then eric ten hag all three of them were had their distinct personalities had were equally successful like ten hag was probably the least successful of the lot but they have done enough to warrant that they are good managers to come in and they all of them came in and are are struggling still and for me the problem is something deep within that needs to be changed i want personally i want united to be at a place where like you know chelsea of the past or real madrid right now where they're not too dependent on the coach i know it's weird coming from a united fan because we've always like you know put the coach at the pedestal of everything we got lucky for 26 years but we will never get that lucky ever again we can never even if jose mourinho could not with his charm and charisma do it I don't think anyone can come in and just like be that demi god figure. Even if we get in Pep or Arteta, I feel like we're bound bound to fail. Even though they're like really great managers, because we don't have the setup in place to make them successful. And doesn't really matter if Ten Hag stays or not. I want for twenty four twenty five. I want United to be at a place where we are making those changes, like Chelsea under Roman and Real Madrid of current, where. there is a lot more emphasis on infrastructure like you know on recruitment yeah. not just going and buying like random people like because we think that they are marketable we can sell more jerseys and stuff like that that shouldn't be the case i want our recruitment to be so solid that we buy good character players who are who fit into the squad who fit into the structure of the things um ten hag in or out i really don't care right for me personally it only depends if we are playing if I think this is a good place for us to evaluate him. Whatever happened so far, whatever happened, he's in a place where he can still turn it around. I want to see if he has that in him to like turn it around or not. Um, and we'll just wait and watch. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, and I I do agree with that. And also, like if we look at any of these major rebuilds that have happened at Liverpool or Arsenal or City, right? 
they all had the infrastructure in place but they had to give the manager like a few seasons to sort of even build through it right like even pep took like two or three seasons arteta is still taking his time klopp also took like two three seasons to get on with it and like actually get a good like title winning competing squad and ten hag has had the worst uh like setup compared to all of these players uh, all of these managers and yeah i mean if we are going in the right direction of like building good infrastructure then then it sort of makes sense to focus on the infrastructure and keep a manager but i mean i would prefer the system where we are manager agnostic and just do what we want to do yeah you know arteta is no, probably agree. a success because of the system that is put in place and that is a huge factor and we can never discount that i think uh i think okay i just i have to come in here fuck you guys <laughs> <laughs> i want to know how to light so, up yeah <laughs> dude arteta put the system in place so what the fuck are you guys on about <laughs> Like Arteta literally put the system in 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 the place. Like when he came on, we had those uh, frauds in Raul Sanelli who paid seventy two million for Pepe and like all of these flawed transfers. And he was working under those guys. When he came on, he actually put the system in place. But, he had like, a rough patch, but then he was able to convince the uh, the whole like you know the management and everybody about his skills, about his long term vision, breaking that down, convincing them. Okay, this is how it's gonna go and stuff like that. So I. I I generally don't care about Ten Hag and I do want him to stay forever because I don't think he is it but uh, please don't compare him to Arteta. <laughs> I'm not comparing Ten Hag to Arteta bro I'm just saying or that the situation or in Ar- to Humsey's point you're never getting Arteta bro and you know I didn't whatever you say. <laughs> I mean, we we don't want like we don't want see, Arteta bro. We don't want Arteta honestly. I mean because I feel like he is yeah. he is cut from that Arsenal cloth and like I don't think he would ever want to come and I think it's not good juju to get a manager who's like so involved with another rival club get in Jose Mourinho is one of the true professionals who could like literally go to all four clubs and manage snakes, them snakes is the word snake is the word <laughs> but um, otherwise but what nah, no, I mean winner or snake whatever right same shit like Yeah, yeah you can't. Only you can't, place he hasn't won is fucking Tottenham before a final. I I feel like he's so salty about it. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you can't question Jose Mourinho. Ruining his CV. Yeah, yeah. he's a snake. Yeah, dude, I'm looking forward to the documentary. By the way, oh god, <laughs> it's gonna be fucking nuts. But <laughs> he's gonna do an expose so bad, like Jim is gonna fucking hide, bro. <laughs> but uh, but, yeah, but I want to close thoughts, Nihal, on good. this. By the way, our manager dilemma, right? Yeah. So you said manager agnostic recruitment. Sid said, you know, uh, invest in infrastructure, maybe availability of managers. I agree with both of you, right? And and I think a decision has to be made. I don't know. I don't know who makes that decision at the club, right? Uh, like, what kind of uh, what kind of style does Manchester is Manchester United going to stand for in the next five to ten years? Like, maybe like medium to long term, and and you know you recruit players according to it, um, and you know a manager is somebody who either like he's like a catalyst to that process, right? And I think Brighton have that philosophy like totally nailed down. Like they they'll get manager after manager after manager, player after player after player, but their philosophy is set. Uh, the recruitment feeds into it, and their manager is just a catalyst to it. If we can build something like that, right? Or you know, we can we can at least have a blueprint to something like that. Then you know, we can we can get somewhere. And a manager is just one part to it, and a system is just one part to it, and a player is just one part to it, and they all just. you know come together as a club right and the club we love and support today everybody has their own club for that right because it stands for something and it's sort of crazy that you know, as united fans we've had that identity crisis where seasons have been written off and we don't know who we are anymore right and we're, we're fighting about what manager is going to be in and you know, which player is going to be in and out yeah yeah oh i think oh. The, i think the identity point is where i'm also having like a tough time trying to digest all of this because for 26 years we've we've hid behind the identity of a person as the identity of the club right it was ferguson running the show it was ferguson's style of play it was ferguson's players it was ferguson's teams like he recycled a bunch of teams like he went through players like he spanned over like multiple football careers right 
and we we are never we after post ferguson era we were always thinking that we are going to get someone in who is like ferguson who we are going to stand behind and like who is going to take us through and we missed the train by like not going aggressively for club because club would have been perfect like for that kind of like if we wanted to model ourselves as that kind of club and honestly these 10 years of obscurity i mean to have some perspective right like in these 10 years we've won two carabao cups one fa cup one europa league we've we've had more champions league campaigns than other teams in the league right now right so even in these 10 years although we are having this like very tough identity crisis at this point because we don't know how we play we don't know who this is because it didn't go to our plan because the manager there was never another savior who who walked in and we hit behind him so maybe this 10 years of like this randomness with some trophies sprinkled in between is decent enough because now we can go back and actually never look for hiding behind like a manager we need to pivot and i think the ownership is in the right place where they're thinking through thinking about this the right way they want to model it more around like a brighton like a city like an arsenal who have had very good structures in place and one if they get lucky with the catalyst manager that comes in and walks in boom it works out really well right like and i want us to pivot to that kind of thing and hopefully we do uh, and no disrespect to arteta like maybe arteta in a weird structure like a united structure could still be a success we just won't ever know like i feel like the backing that he got from croenkes and edu probably like helped him you know get through uh, a very weird patch you know remember that season where he lost the first three games and they st- they still backed him yeah. and then then like he went all the way to the end and like poorly like crashed out to spurs it was unfortunate but like although they still backed him and then he still came back next season had a really great run and now he's doing it again in the third season after that right so hopefully yeah. we get to that stage where we are thinking about where we give more credit to people behind the manager and i think that is where the true success lies in this modern age sorry for my long winded monologue no, no, no. fully fully that. agree yeah <laughs> fuck you <laughs> <laughs> no okay so that's the night right i think uh, you all would want elite nak to stay for different reasons vamsi for uh, believing in him me for actually believing in that he will never change and the uh, shit storm will continue and the other two are probably are agnostics so let's move on to some english prospects uh i want to bring the discussion on to a much lesser talked about club we never discuss it probably a comical club these days billion dow a billion dollar bottle jobs uh but one player is definitely not bottling it and that's Cole Palmer uh city's loss is chelsea's gain i think city probably miss him guardiola would say no pochettino would say yes what do you think about his chances uh firstly his performance in premier league and secondly england chances euros coming up 25 goals and assist in a season uh it's amazing isn't it yeah he is and uh, highest fpl points oh is he at the, is he at the top <laughs> yes. oh wow look wow. at the boy like, he is... almost sounds as good as saka isn't it <laughs> <laughs> okay. i mean like, going down the touchy 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 train <laughs> no but i think i, I can't yeah. deny him the spot i can't deny him the spot at the table so yes although it's a touchy topic it's a really good thing for england that we have two left footed right wingers and both of them equally class equal quality saka has more lot more experience obviously because he's been here doing it and it's probably really good for england and also saka in the long term because like he the weight of the fucking countries uh it's a obese fucking country bro first of all yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it is <laughs> <laughs> entire weight of those like idiots is, was resting on him and they were so critical of saka and now i think it's good that like they have a different alternative um cole palmer who with weird fucking teeth <laughs> and weird fucking <laughs> yeah. yeah his face is a little weird no yeah it is weird 
Let's not go there. Let's not go there. <laughs> he looks like he needs help. Like let's he keep it like civil, guys. I can't. <laughs> I can't edit this out. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he only looks like he needs help in the grocery store all the time. But apart, yeah. from, <laughs> apart from that, he's he's a class act. Yeah. Yeah, and and um, the fact that he's doing it in Chelsea and like. doing it so well given the state of the squad there like it, it just adds to all the praises right like he is literally car- I, I i don't i don't know if i'll go all the way saying he's carrying the team because the team are not going anywhere to be very honest but <laughs> always have some shade for chelsea <laughs> no matter what always always <laughs> but no seriously with all respect like cole palmer is one of those silver linings in the, in their season where like he was not the talk of the season when he joined uh, at the beginning of the season for that yeah. matter and now the fact that people are even questioning oh guardiola actually made a mistake with keeping alvarez and letting go of to cole palmer i mean alvarez is also great but cole palmer my god like he has been one of the revelations of this season and i'm actually very excited for england because we have so many like england has so many good players for in the national team right now upcoming talents and saka and palmer you have declan rice I don't know if Kobe Mayne will be involved, but I'm just a bit of. I think it should be. Him. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that, you're forgetting Philippe P, bro. Fucking form. Phil Foden. Form of his life. Yes. Yeah. Phil Foden. Yeah. Yeah. So much exactly. exactly. The three of them on that right wing, like ridiculous. Yeah. No, no, no yeah, one's just too much. Foden. They're not gonna win shit, but it's just too much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, but like. Uh, no, I, I think, mean, even even that kind of talent. Yeah. I remember. Dude, uh, Foden's twenty three. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's twenty three, and Palmer left when he was twenty one, right? And yeah. could you fault Pep for keeping, you know, Phil Foden and sending out a younger player? Probably not. It's like couple years difference. I can't believe Foden's twenty three. By the way, I feel like. Feels like he's been around forever, and having a player like that, I would let Palmer go too. Palmer would want minutes for sure, and yeah, yeah I'm surprised no other team went for him, man. Like know, fucking right? uh, Spurs are signing Werner, Richarlison, all these fuckers, and you know, like no one actually went for Palmer. Like it's huh. sort of crazy. And, and you know, Diaby went for more money, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, and you know, he would have been like really, really, really good at any other club too. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not like he's only doing this at Chelsea. Yeah. it would have been like fucking amazing and also like you have to give credit to cole palmer himself because this dude whenever he was put on like the city team last year he was scoring goals he was making the difference and stuff like that but to count on yourself yeah. and take a chance that i'm 21 if i stay here i'll always i'll just have to fight behind like you know ford and, and try to get into these yeah. like random 10 15 minutes per game I'm just gonna go elsewhere. Try to like figure this shit out, and I think kudos to him. It's working out really well. Like, and I feel like a lot of like city youngsters in the past have done that. Like Jaden Sancho, Cole Palmer, um, and who's that? Brahim Lavia. Diaz. Brahim Diaz. Diaz. Brahim Diaz. Yeah. Brahim Diaz. Lavia. Like. Lira Sane. Yeah, and it, 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 despite can't talk about losing, Sancho, right? Of course. <laughs> despite losing like players like this, tells City just keeps. Uh, city still has like a conveyor belt in their own first team and stuff like that yeah. but um, it's it's like i would i have special respect for like a city academy player because i feel like they are really worth the metal um i do have jason wilcox that. might be joining united soon head of their academy that's who brought all these players yeah i, I don't think it's much. i mean i do think it's the academy but i don't think it's because of the personnel in the academy i feel like uh Again, with everything city, I think this this comes with an asterisk. They have academy budgets which are not related to FFP at all, equal into championship sides. So I think there's a lot more to it than just the personnel uh, who are being brought in. But that's a conversation for a separate day. I think right now it's about you know Palmer and like, yeah, even Chelsea, dude. I mean, uh, yeah, both, both of them, both of them, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, think about it, right? Like Chelsea are what forty two points from twenty eight games. And twenty-five goals and assists have come from like Cole Palmer. Take that away, I don't know where they would have been. <laughs> like, I think uh, Sheffield United is a good, good, good benchmark for them. <laughs> Cole Palmer was right, right below Luton, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's where they would have been. 
our beloved Luton would not have been in relegation. Yeah. Fuck Palmer, what have what have you done? Yeah. No, but like imagine. Yeah. Uh, I remember when he came on, when he actually signed for Chelsea. He signed. I mean, there were talks that he signed only because Nkunku Nkunku was injured long term. Mm-hmm. And I remember doing this pod with uh, Chelsea Pakistan people, and they were like, you know, as soon as Nkunku comes back, Cole Palmer will be like a rotation on a rotation role and like what not. And I'm like, yeah, this is such a mad piece of business because you're buying a no name for forty five million dollars, and you're you know signing him for rotation when your first team player is not available. So what are you doing? But then clearly proved me wrong big time. Uh, so all all. Oh, where's Nkunku by the way? Oh, he, <laughs> is, he, is he alive, dude? <laughs> he, he retired. He, he came back one game. Not suiting me. <laughs> he came back one game. He had an assist, and oh. I saw a lot of memes about like how he had more contributions than Anthony. And I'm like, bro, Anthony had like a sexual allegation, went to Brazil, came back, and is still around at least. Yeah. Like not injured on a medical. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, in FPL, okay, they count the number of dead FPL teams by how many people still have Enkumko on their uh, game week squad. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> Yeah, I saw this on Twitter. I was like, "What is going on?" Bro, I won't lie. I mean, I'm still lower than those dead FPL accounts on FPL, even though I'm an active user. So, <laughs> don't to- let's not even go there, AJ. Yeah, but- I had three players who played bro this game week. <laughs> my FPL is so bad. <laughs> but I have more than my login details. For okay. You definitely have to go in your team. Apart from Cole Palmer and Kobe Mayno, is there any other English youngster that has impressed you? Branthwaite, Jared Branthwaite, uh, Everton defender. Yep. I think uh, he's still still a little bit raw, but putting in amazing performances linked to you guys uh, for a summer move. Yeah. Uh, I think he will definitely move to a bigger club as soon as uh, you know, as soon as an offer comes in, he'll really he'll go for a big money move. Yeah. And I think he'll he'll prove out to be a pretty decent defender in the long term. He's twenty one, six four. Like he's built like a fucking horse, um, yeah. and he has like the most aerial duels or something. Also, right? That also comes yeah. with the nature of playing for Everton, I guess. But mm-hmm. yeah, Still. or just Sean Dash in general, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's all they do. Aiming to match their yeah. like aerial duels. <laughs> It's their bread and butter. Yeah. <laughs> He he seemed like a fairer version of Tyrone Mings than I saw. Brain fade, but a really good player. Dude. Like I mean, physically he's exactly like Mingsy, but just like football IQ is so good. Just so good at carrying the ball. Yeah, fully good shout, AJ. And um, it's 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 future's looking bright for England. Let's see. Uh, I, but as long as fucking Southgate keeps calling Henderson, I don't see. What is the point of having a bad future? <laughs> like <laughs> present. I, uh, that that, that yeah. boils my boils my blood. Henderson call, but let's move on from that one. All right, two. I mean, is Connor Bradley? Uh, sorry, uh, is Connor Bradley also English? Because like he is. I thought he was Welsh. Also a big. Okay, he's oh, he's Welsh. Irish, yeah. Yeah. But I think he's also been very Welsh or Scottish. One of those, yeah. Bro, I don't think Conor Bradley or people like those stand chance in an England sh- England team just because of the players that are in front of him. Mm-hmm. I mean, England is stacked. Dude, up. I mean, Trent and James are dead, bro. Like, this literally. No, but I don't know who else is there? What Van Bissaka starts or what? Who's playing right back? Bro, Van Bissaka. Oh, no, ben, start White, ben, ben White gave a sucker punch to Southgate. It's <laughs> like. Oh boy. <laughs> It's like we don't need for that topic. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. He said he was covering the he's covering Twitter during Euros and he's like spamming me saying, "Dude, apparently Ben White fought with all these boys and you know he got sent back and yeah. apparently that doesn't happen to get like sent back from the camp. That's that's sort of crazy. Yeah, <laughs> There's a lot of rumors on that, but uh, yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Somebody stood up for themselves against Southgate, so yeah, yeah. it needs to go. 